Hi guys, welcome to Empower In. My name is Caroline Porter Thomas. Thank you so much for watching this video. In this video, I wanted to give you a quick update on how I'm dealing with the obvious pandemic that has shut down the entire world. I wanted to possibly offer you some advice, ways to stay healthy, ways to stay positive. I know it helps me a lot to hear from other people what helps them. So I'm hoping to do the same for you in this video. So let's get right into it. So the first thing is I do live in Miami, Florida. This is not one of the hot spots. However, we have started to see an uptick in cases. We recently did open up a COVID ICU. And when I left last time, which was two days ago, uh, we had nine patients in that ICU, all of them positive except one new patient that was an admission of mine, but he's most likely going to be positive also. Now there's a lot of mystery going around with this disease. I've never seen anything like it. I mean, as a nurse, I'm used to dealing with a lot of really dangerous bugs. I mean, MRSA, TB, VRE, we've kind of seen it all, but this is just different. I mean, this is something that has shut the whole world down. And I don't know if there's more to it, if in a month or two, we're gonna see this massive wave. So the response that has been taken is a little bit more scary than actually what I'm seeing in the hospital. I have asked my husband to come on my channel also and give an overview of the disease. Um, he's a virologist and so he's going to come on maybe in the next day or two, maybe longer, depending on when we get the video done. And he will give an overview of the virus, what is known up to date. So I hope that also helps you. So be on the lookout for that video. Now my outlook's always been to not ignore difficulties. Um, I like to acknowledge when things are not perfect or when things are not as I would like them to be <laughs> in a way. One of the first problems that I've noticed is the lack of PPE or I guess the constriction or constraints of disbursement of the PPE. When all of this first started in about, I think it was maybe end of January, my unit had someone come from the corporate office of the hospital and they told us exactly how we were supposed to use PPE, things like you should only use an N95 mask five times, you should mark it every time you use it, that way you remember how many times you've used it. She taught us how to put pappers on, um, she gave us all sorts of great tips and as soon as she walked out the door I feel like other people came in and kind of just disregarded everything she said. And that was a little bit frustrating. So people telling me different things didn't really make me feel comfortable. The current administration is telling us that we need to use our N95 mask until they die. Um, for me, that's the end of the shift. I can barely breathe in the N95 mask at the end of the shift anyways. So, so far I've been able to get a new N95 mask every day. I do hope that continues. Also, we were able, the first few cases that we had, we were able to use Pappers, which are so amazing. I absolutely love Pappers. After wearing the N95 mask for so long, and it has such constriction on your face, and you feel like you're inhaling your CO2 all day, the Papper is such an amazing invention. I just love it. So the Papper works, it has like a little fan that goes in the back, and it filters the air, and it blows in the air. Your face is completely free. You have a full shield, full headgear, and you wear a gown and all the other stuff. Pretty much everything is covered except your feet, which obviously you can clean your shoes with the hospital strength wipes. So that is my favorite by far, but unfortunately now that we opened up a COVID ICU, there's just really too many patients for all the nurses to have the equipment, so we haven't really been able to use those as much either. Another thing that I have found difficult is the constant change in the transmission of the disease. First they were saying it's droplet, so you just need a surgical mask, you'll be fine with that. They said it was just like the flu, then they're saying it's airborne, and then they're saying something like it's droplet with special precautions. So ultimately, I just feel like perhaps they don't know it's still a work in progress, and that is a little bit scary, I'm not going to lie. And then another thing that has sort of made me think, I guess, is the fact that men are affected at an 80% higher rate than women. So while I'm not as nervous for myself, of course I do worry about my husband. So like I said, I do like to acknowledge what's not perfect, but at the same time, I've always had the mindset that if you're going to acknowledge what's not perfect, then you need to also acknowledge what's good. So, so far here's the things that I have thought were really good. The communities around hospitals have really been amazing. Every day, companies are bringing food to us. 
Um, sometimes they write special cute little notes on their appreciation. We had a bunch of people, I don't know who they were, but a bunch of people made signs for the hospital for when we drive in. I thought that was really cute. Also, people are making handmade masks for us. I mean, I don't think we can use them in the hospital, but it's just so cute. And then also like little hair things, little, little hair. It's a <laughs> Just so sweet how you know people taking the time to do these things. And then I also had um, a kayak company. They actually took the time to make little face shields. Of course, you know they're not like hospital durable kind of things, but you know if if you don't have anything else, this is absolutely better than nothing. And it's so nice that they sent a bunch of these to me for my hospital, and I really do appreciate that. And also people have been donating masks, they've been donating things that they think that you know I, myself, or my coworkers could use. I mean, the way communities have really rallied behind healthcare workers is really special. And I'm just really appreciative of that. I think it's also nice that uh, people understand the risk that comes with being a healthcare worker. You know, we are exposed to a lot of things and this is just something that we knew from the get-go. We knew it was a risk, but we still did it. And I guess for one of the first times, we're really appreciated for that. And it's nice, I'm not gonna lie, it's nice. <laughs> I also appreciated, I mean, my particular hospital, they started doing a lot of checks before we went into the hospital. Right away, they started, if we had one of the patients that had COVID-19 initially, you know, they, to, I guess to stop the spread, they started giving us the patients one-to-one, -one, which really helped to get over the fear. It also helped to get used to putting on all of the stuff to protect ourselves. It was a really good slow walk into, now what we have is the COVID ICU, so that was a good, you know, little stepping, stepping point. And I also appreciated my hospital has also started giving us meals. So if we do work with the COVID positive patients, we do automatically get breakfast and lunch. And so that's nice. So like I said, if you're going to acknowledge the things that are not perfect or are not as you'd like them to be, try to acknowledge at least the good things also because there's always something good available if you choose to focus on that. I also wanted to give you some tips on how to stay healthy during this time. I know many of you that have been following my channel know that I've been juicing for years. This is something that I love doing, absolutely. But I wanted to also encourage you that you can juice or even blend vegetables and you can freeze them and you can drink or eat that later. So at least you have some vitamins from the vegetables every day. I know it's really hard to go grocery shopping now. They're hardly letting anyone in the stores. There's lines to get in. You can hardly order online anymore. So yeah, I know it's a lot rougher out there, but whatever vegetables you can find, perhaps you could just make a smoothie and then freeze the smoothies for later. So I do have a juicer. I do juice and I freeze for later. And then what I try to do is just do it by bulk. I will in the area below or maybe as a pen post, I will put what I juice, but I really encourage you, just use whatever you have that you think is really healthy, hopefully organic, because a little bit of vegetable juice can go a long way. A lot of times when I talk about juicing, people think I'm a vegetarian. I'm not a vegetarian. I actually have gotten mostly vegetarian pretty much by accident because I didn't really like to cook and it was not good for my body. Um, just all sorts of things started going wrong, so I'm not a vegetarian. I love chicken. Uh, lately, when I went to the store, there was hardly any meat, so I did um, pick up bison, which was actually really good. And I found out that bison is one of the only animals that they're not allowed to farm. So every bison that you find in the store is raised with a very normal life. So the first, 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 first health tip is to avoid sugar. You've got to avoid sugar at all costs, guys. Sugar just feeds everything bad. It feeds bacteria, it feeds viruses, it feeds cancer. Sugar is just really, really, really bad. Sadly, I do see a lot of nurses bringing candy into the unit and it's just the worst thing that they can do because let's say you had a relatively good immune system walking in, there's a bag of M&Ms, chocolates, whatever, what have you, and what if your body was fighting off the infection, you loaded yourself up with sugar, boom, you just gave that virus or bacteria their best dream, which is not good for you. So just avoid sugar at all costs. If you're having a sugar craving, eat some Thing first, drink a full cup of water. A lot of our cravings are just coming from being hungry. So if you try to keep yourself relatively full so that you don't get too hungry, that'll help you out. I do eat several times a day. It's hard to do that. You know, I just have to run back, stuff my face, run back out. It's not easy to find the time to do that, but I have to in order for me to make better choices. 
Okay, so I do take a lot of vitamins. I don't take all of these, all of these at the same time, but I have all of these around and I kind of just alternate. These are things that I've been doing for years. At the very top, I would put vitamin C. With vitamin C though, you want it to be like a fruit source or liposomal vitamin C. The regular ascorbic acid supposedly is not nearly as good as liposomal or fruit source vitamin C. The other vitamin, this is major, major for me, is vitamin D. Vitamin D, I can't tell you how many times I've been right up in people's faces and then found out later that they were influenza A or B positive. And thankfully, I very, very, very rarely get sick and I really think that the vitamin D has helped a lot with that. I also like this whole food source vitamin from Dr. Mercola. So if you just wanted a one-stop shop, this would probably be a great option for you. Of course, you don't have to use this brand, but if you just look for a whole food multivitamin, and there's quite a few companies that do that, thankfully. Another thing that I did start taking specifically for this was zinc. So I have been taking a little bit of zinc. It was hard to find. I had to go to two different stores to find it, but I did ask if they had it in the back, and the second store that I went to did have it in the back. So make sure if you're at the store Store, you ask them if they have it in the back and they will check and sometimes they do have it. This next one is called elderberry syrup. I did specifically buy this, um, I think it was in January when I found out about the coronavirus. Got a little bit nervous and purchased this one. It's actually so yummy. It's like the most yummy thing I've ever had. I eat an almond yogurt every day and I usually put a little bit of honey and I've also been adding this. It is so tasty. One vitamin that I've been taking for years is thymic formula. Thymic formula is also an immune support. I really like it. I really do think that it helps with my immune system. It also gives me a little bit of energy, so that's kind of nice. So everyone lately has been talking about gut health. It's all about gut health. <laughs> So you definitely wanna make sure you take a really good probiotic. This is the one I take, but of course there's tons of companies out there that make good probiotics. One thing that I do um, that's not necessarily a vitamin, but it's something that I think is really good for the air, especially in your house, is I love to use diffusers. And in my diffuser, I use essential oils. The essential oils that I use are lemongrass, frankincense, and rose oil. And I also like to add a little bit of colloidal silver to that because colloidal silver is known to kill anaerobic microbes. So I think that it sort of clears the air. And also essential oils have been shown to do that as well. Now I did start drinking this tea. This was like sort of a scare purchase in January when we're first hearing about this virus. Um, it's chaga tea. So chaga is a mushroom that grows in cold places. It's a natural antiviral. And obviously with this being a virus, I thought, well, it can't hurt. So I've been drinking basically one cup a day. This little bag that I have, if I just drink one fourth of a teaspoon, this will last me the entire year. And I think it was less than $20. I'll have to check, but that's one that I would look into if, if you could. And then also I always like to try to get local honey because local honey has been known to boost the immune system where you live. This last vitamin is melatonin. So there's been a lot of talk about how this disease is not affecting infants, babies, children, which is amazing. I'm so happy to hear that. Some people are speculating though that it's because of the amount of melatonin that children have as opposed to adults. Anyways, I've been taking melatonin for years. It's actually changed my life. I didn't know that I had a sleeping problem until I took melatonin. But I do think, especially during this time, even if you don't normally take melatonin, you can just get a three milligram or five milligram dose. And if nothing else, it'll help you sleep. Now, one other thing that I do to stay healthy, especially if I feel like I'm starting to get like a scratch in the throat, um, that's like one of the first signs when you're starting to maybe get the flu or get a cold or something like that. I like to right away just do intensive oral health with healthy toothpaste. So this is one of the toothpaste that I love. It's the Dr. Bonner's. I also really like to use activated charcoal. You can use any one, any one you want, but these really do kill a lot of the bacteria or viral agents that are causing the inflammation, especially if you brush the tongue like really good. So that helps. And then I also like to gargle with warm salt water, preferably Himalayan pink salt, because that can also kill viruses and bacteria as well. So next I wanted to talk about my experience with my first COVID positive patient. I felt like I was in nursing school again. I was reading about all the signs, all the symptoms. I was just scared to death to go into the room. I kept reading about all the symptoms, all the people that were getting it, all the people that were coming out positive, all of the young coworkers that were getting it, and I just made myself sick. I started to feel chills. I kept 
filling my head. I was like, oh my gosh, I know I have a fever. I know I have a fever. I started to get short of breath. I was like, oh my gosh, my lungs, I'm getting stuff in my lungs. So I started to get really, really nervous. If you guys remember in nursing school, you started to feel like all of the ailments you were studying. So right away, I was like, all right, I've got to get a handle on this. Otherwise, I'm just going to pass out. That's not going to help anybody. So I went, I grabbed a thermometer and I was like, I'm pretty sure it's going to be high. So I checked it and it said 96.9. I was like, clearly that one's not working. So I got another one, I got a temporal thermometer and it was like 97.1. And it's really funny because looking at the objective data, within an hour, all of my ailments went away, my shortness of breath went away, my chills went away, my fake fever went away. So when you start to feel like your mind is running away with fear, just try to focus on, again, objective data. Now obviously don't ignore any symptoms that you may have. And if you really do have objective data that does support your feelings, then obviously that's a different story but a lot of times it's just this fear track in our mind that's going crazy so that's one way to like calm that down another thing that you can do is just turn off the news and don't look at all the stats all day just focus on what you have right in front of you focus on doing the best thing for your patient that's right in front of you focus on being the best for your co-workers that are available for you that you can help right there just turn off all the doom and gloom it's not going to help you it is what it is and just do the best you can protect yourself as best as you can protect your patient protect your co-workers as best as you can looking at the statistics doesn't mean that that's what's going to happen in your hospital or in your town or in your city all you can control is what's in front of you and that's it you can't control anything else so just focus on you your environment your surroundings that's it keep it simple Another thing that I love to do is to find ways to laugh and memes are an incredible way to do that. The toilet paper memes are off the chart. Why there's a shortage on toilet paper, I have no idea. This is not a disease that causes diarrhea. I've gotten into those stores where everything's pretty much available, eggs, food, anything you want but toilet paper. No idea why, but the toilet paper memes have been really a lifesaver <laughs> amongst other memes. <laughs> I did send my family this one and they were all like, great, you're negative. <laughs> I was like, guys, <laughs> it's just a joke. It's just a joke. <laughs> Also, I think it's really important to find ways to be grateful. I know it is scary sometimes walking into work, but you could look at it a different way. At least we have somewhere to go. Imagine not being able to go to work. I mean, this has really shut down the entire world and a lot of people are bored out of their minds. So although this is a problem, I'd rather have this problem than I guess sitting at home all the time. I mean, I know some people like that, but I think after a while you get tired of it, especially if it was almost mandatory, you know? It's a little bit different when you have have to stay home. So at least we have a place to go and interact with people and help people. Also, try to get outside, get some fresh air, and also try to sit down on the ground. There's a lot of research that shows that the Earth emits an electrical frequency. It's called the Schumann Resonance, and this frequency also affects us. I read a book a while ago. I cannot remember which book it is. I tried to look it up before. <laughs> I could not find it. Um, and it showed that if you just go outside for about seven minutes a day and connect to the planet, what they said is that you have to do it either barefoot or you have to sit. It, it has to be like the electrical charge can go through cloth, but it can't go through rubber. So you can't go outside, stand on your shoes and get the same thing. You have to do it with either sitting on the ground, taking your shoes off and walking on the ground. They said that what it does is it actually balances out the electrical system in our bodies. A lot of people say that a lot of depression can be healed that way. I could see that being the case, absolutely. Now guys, the last thing that I wanted to share with you is that I wanted to encourage you that we're going to get through this. We are in it together. I really believe that our best days are yet to come. I honestly think that our future is going to be so bright. We will get through this. I always like this verse and I want to share it with you. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray with me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. And that's from Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13. 
Guys, you're so brave to get up and go to work every day. I know sometimes you might not feel so brave, but just moving in that direction, that takes courage and that's commendable. So guys, I really do hope this video helped you. If it did, give it a thumbs up, please. And I'm sorry it was long, but you know, I just didn't know if I would have time to film a bunch of small videos. So I just said, you know what? Let me just film a long video. Some videos are long. You can listen to it in double speed if you want. That's up to you. But be on the lookout because like I said in the beginning, I did ask my husband who is a virologist to come on. So he has prepared a presentation. So be on the lookout for that guys. And again, just be your best, do your best, take care of yourself, take care of your patients, take care of your coworkers. We are in this together. We're gonna get through this together. And where we go one, we go all. Love you guys, bye.